Hey, yo, what's good, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of your favorite MMA picks, predictions, and betting channel, Bros Talk MMA. I'm your host, Utica, undeniably the illest cat around, a.k.a. Mr. Make This Pick Real Quick, a.k.a. The Parlay Prince. I almost forgot, and I've been on a fucking bad one, <laughs> but we're going to get one of these parlays here soon. Besides that, though, I'm here with my bro host extraordinaire. You know what it is. It's Ray Bucks. It's Jackal Jordan. It's Mr. Give me my belt. Hand me my crown. The parlay god. You did pretty good on last week's card, That's my right. man. right. Black Nostradamus, Black Jesus, Black Moses. Leading his people to the promised land. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We're here this week to cover this weekend's special, uh, what is it, Abu Dhabi card. It's going to be a, a bantamweight bout between... Corey Sanhagen going up against Umar and Umar Gametov. <laughs> um, I believe that this is going to be a 13-fight card. So we're going to start in the first fight of the night. Damn, I forgot to put their weights. But we got Shadrikis Dumas going up against Denise Tolulin. Tulu um, we got Dumas coming in. Two and two in the UFC, nine and two overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got Tululin coming in. They are one and four in the UFC, eleven and nine overall, and three and two in their last five fights. I'm gonna be going with Dumas in this one, uh, either by KO or decision. They're gonna be the younger, longer fighter. They should have the edge in the grappling. Um, I just think that they'll have more routes to victory overall. It'll be a standing fight primarily, but uh, I just feel like, you know, once um, Dumas starts getting the better of uh, the two on the feet, Tulum will probably shoot for a takedown, and at that point, uh, Dumas can probably uh, dominate down there as well. I think my only concern with this fight is that they'll have the longer travel of the two making it out to Abu Dhabi. Um, this was a fight that was supposed to happen already, but there was visa issues, huh? visa issues on, uh, Dumas's part, but, uh, Tululin, they're going to be the older fighter by eight years. Uh, they're a dangerous guy, but at this point in their career, they're pretty much, you know, their chin has been, you know, weathered. Uh, they don't really have any ground game. Um, and I just feel like maybe they got into the UFC like too late in their career. And uh, it just hasn't been a good go for them. So I'll be going with Dumas in this fight. I got to go with Dumas as well. Uh, he is the better striker, the faster striker, the more powerful striker. Um, and he's got great takedown defense um, and I think wrestling defense. Uh, so I think at some point, like you said, that Tulu will try to take him down. But Dumas will be able to um, essentially stop that shit. So uh, Dumas for the win on this one. This is going to be a middleweight bout, by the way, just to let y'all know. Moving on to the lightweight division, we got Jai Herbert going up against Rolando Bedoya. We got Herbert coming in. They are 2-4 and four with one draw in the UFC, 12-5 and five with that one draw overall, and 2-3 and three in their last five fights. We got Bedoya coming in. They are 0-2 in the UFC, 14-3 overall. And uh, currently, actually, wait. Oh. Yeah, and they're uh, three and two in their last five fights. My pick's going to be with Herbert by decision. They're going to be the older fighter by nine years and the longer fighter, but I just think that they'll have the edge in the striking. They should be able to keep things standing. Um, They face better competition than Bedoya. Uh, they're a little chinny, which is my only concern, but I, I don't even know if it's chinny or if it's just that they've gone up against such strong competition that they just got knocked the fuck out. I got Bedoya coming in, you know, they're going to have the edge in grappling, but every time I've seen them, they primarily like to, st to stand. They're going to be the younger fighter. Um, they, they got cardio, but it's not like. I don't know, it's not great cardio, and their body language starts to turn real bad uh, as the fight goes into the later rounds. So I'm going to be going with Herbert in this one. 
I got Jai Herbert for the win. Uh, I'm not going to give you a whole lot of uh, technical analysis on this. Not that I ever do. So Jai Herbert for the win. For sure, for sure. Moving on to the strawweight division, we got Victoria Dudakova going up against Sam Hughes. We got Dudakova coming in 2-0 in the UFC, 8-0 overall. We got Hughes coming in 3-5 in the UFC, 8-6 overall, and 3-2 and in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Hughes in this fight. Um, they're going to be the older fighter by seven years, but uh, they're just going to have more U UFC experience. Uh, they face way better competition uh, over their career. This is more of them just being a, a gatekeeper to do the Kova, see if they actually really have what it takes to level up. Um, I'd say that their their cardio and age are like my only concerns, but I just feel like due to Kova, although well rounded, they just haven't faced any UFC caliber competition. Oh, I'm just not sold on him yet. Dudakova, like you said, is the younger fighter. Uh, Sam Hughes is... She's old. How uh, dare older. you? Uh, women, women fighters, they, they have like a lower uh, uh, lifespan, so to speak, um, in the uh, UFC, in, in the fight game. Um, so I think she's past her prime. I think Dudakova is going to go ahead and take this one fairly easily. Um, and that's my pick. For sure, for sure. Moving on to the lightweight division. We got Gram Kutataladze going up against Jordan Vucinic. Um, We got Kutataladze coming in 1-2 and two in the UFC, 12-4 and four overall, and 3-2 and two in their last five fights. We got Vucinic coming in. Uh, this is going to be their UFC debut. They're 13 and 2 overall and 4 and 1 in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with <laughs> Kuta Teladze uh by decision. They're going to be the they're going to be the slightly taller fighter out of the two. They're going to have the edge in the striking. They'll be the older fighter by 4 years and uh you know, more experienced in the UFC of two, obviously, but um I don't know. I think really just like their grappling's my only concern. But Fusenic looks like they're primarily a, a like they like to they like to stand, but they do have grappling if it does go to the ground. But uh, I just I'm not sold on somebody making their UFC debut. So you're going with Kuta Teladze. Kuta Teladze. Kuta Teladze. That's a that's a wild ass name. Um, yeah. I'm glad to agree with you. That's going to be my pick. Um, I'm not going to say a whole lot about this uh, particular fight of the Magutu Lodge is going to win. All righty. <laughs> well, moving on to the heavyweight division, we got a bout between Shamil Gazeev going up against Dontel Mays. We got Gazeev coming in 1-1 one one in the UFC, 12-1 overall, and 4-1 and in their last five fights. We got Mays coming in there, 4-4-1 four, four, and one no contest in the UFC. 11-6 with that one no contest overall. And 2-2-1 two, two, and one no contest in their last five fights. I'm going to be going with Mays by either decision or KO. I just believe that uh, they're going to have the better gas tank of the two. They're going to be the bigger, longer fighter. Uh, they're durable. And uh, I just feel like they're going to make this just like a sloppy, tired decision fight. And uh, after watching Shamil Gazeev on their last outing, that's really all you got to do. If you can take him out of that first round and a half, he ain't really all that great. Um, Got jabbed to death by Jarzinho Rosenstruck, which, you know, I mean... I'm not going to say that Gazeev isn't, you know, talented or that he, he can't win this fight. But if that's all it really takes to get you out of there, then I, I, I feel like Dante Mays can do that. He's just like a, a bigger Jarzinho Rosen strike. I'm not going to say skill-wise he's on that level, but basically the same dude. Um, But yeah, if this goes into round three, I'm going to assume that Mays is probably going to win it by decision. 
And this was a hard fight for me to pick because uh, Gazeev is, you know, I mean, he's a pit bull in the first round. Uh, he's a monster. He's got all of his cardio. Uh, he hits like a, a, a Mack truck. Um, but once you get him into that second round and you get him late into that second round, those punches are super slow. Like create like slow mo punches, mm-hmm. um, and mm. it's just it's a wrap. You know what I mean? Uh, so that's kind of what uh got me over to the side of uh, of picking Dontel Mays um, versus Gazeev because Gazeev just if he can't make it happen in the first round, he's not making it happen in the second round, and he's definitely not making it happen in the third round. So I just think there's more ways to win for Dontel Mays. Yep. Moving on to the lightweight division, we got Muhammad Yaya going up against Kawi uh, Fernandez. We got Yaya coming in 0 and 1 in the UFC, 12 and 4 overall, and 4 and 1 in their last five fights. We got Fernandez coming in 0 and 1 in the UFC, 8 and 2 overall, and 3 and 2 in their last five fights. Um, I'm gonna be going with Fernandez by decision or submission. They're going to be the better grappler of the two. Um, they may even have an edge in the striking, but we'll just have to see as the fight goes. Um, they're definitely durable. Um, they're going to uh, you know, have more routes to victory, in my opinion. But uh, I guess maybe the cardio is my only concern. We got Yaya. Uh, they're definitely you know, probably the more well-rounded of the two. But... Um, I just think that uh, they're not as durable, and um, yeah, I'm gonna be going with Fernandez. Y'all, y'all just part of the hometown crowd, right? Like he's on this fight because it's an Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi fight. Yeah. Um, is he an all right fighter? Yeah. Uh, do I think he needs to be this high on this card? Probably not. He's more of a uh, a, a fight night card in in uh in, in the apex um kind of fighter um so i think um they've kind of put him a little in a in defense of somebody that's definitely going to take him down uh so fernandez is by picking this one all right moving on to the featured prelim and the Light heavyweight division, we got Alonzo Menafield going up against Azamat Mirzakhanov. Um, we got Menafield coming in there, 8 4 and 1 draw in the UFC, 15 4 and 1 draw overall, and uh, 4 and 1 in their last five fights. We got Mirzakhanov coming in there, 3 and 0 in the UFC, 13 and 0 overall. I'm gonna be going with Mirzakhanov by a KO or decision. Dangerous striker, um, men of field, they're just too inconsistent for me. Um, them coming all the way from America, looking at them, uh, you know, during like weigh-ins and everything today, they, they're more of one of those fighters where their head's in it or it isn't. And, uh, I don't know. He just, he wasn't, uh, looking too into it for me. So, uh, I'm going to be going with Mirza Khanov. I think men has a very high fight IQ. But Minifield is, like you said, very inconsistent. Um, you don't know, like you said, also, like his, you don't know if his head's in it, if his head's not in it. Um, also, he's a fucking boring fighter. You know what I mean? I don't like boring fighters. So uh, I'm going to go with Mirza Khanov on this one. He hasn't been beaten, so no one has the blueprint to do that. Perfect. Um, as I say a lot. Uh, so you got to go with the undefeated fighter. So Mirza Khanov is definitely my pick. Gotcha. Moving on, we're going back to the lightweight division. We got Joel Alvarez going up against Alves Brenner. We got Alvarez coming in 5-2 and two in the UFC, 20-3 and three overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five fights. We got Brenner coming in 3-1 and one in the UFC, 16-4 and four overall, and 4-1 and one in their last five. I'm going to be going with Brenner in this fight by KO or submission. Um, they're the younger fighter. Uh, just a dog overall. Um, super durable. Um, they can grapple, but they primarily like to strike. They're gonna be the more dangerous of the two. Uh, Alvarez definitely probably will have like the edge in the grappling 
they're going to be the older fighter by five years, the longer fighter. Um, I think just their size is what makes them dangerous being a grappler, you know, being able to use their limbs to just lock in things a little bit easier than the average guy. Um, not a dangerous striker, though, and their cardio could be an issue. So I'm going to be going with Brenner in this one. I got to go with Alvarez. He's got the higher fight IQ in this particular fight. You know, I don't, you know, I'm not big on going with the uh, the older fighter, but um, I think it's just a, a better fight IQ is what takes this one down for him. For sure, for sure. Moving on to the women's strawweight division. We got Mackenzie Dern going up against Lupita Lupi Godinez. Um, we got Dern coming in eight and five in the UFC, thirteen and five overall, and two and three in their last five. We got Godinez coming in seven and four in the UFC, twelve and four overall, and four and one in their last five. I'm gonna be going with Dern by either decision or sub. They're gonna be the slightly longer of the two. Um, they're going to definitely have the edge and the grappling. They like to strike and they will, but, um, definitely they're going to be looking to try to take this to the ground. Um, Loopy, who they are a good wrestler, but I don't think that they're going to want to take this one to the ground and their striking's cool, but I don't think it's anything special. So, um... I think that uh, as long as Dern makes it a point to try and get this to the ground, uh, Loopy is going to make a, a mistake somewhere. She usually does. And she's just inconsistent overall to me anyways. So, yeah, I'll be going with Dern in this one. I think Dern should start an OF page and stop fighting. <laughs> so go on with Loopy Godinez. She, she looked... Uh, very, very good on the scales. Absolutely. That's what I will say. I mean, I'm just saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> Get into the OF. Leave the UFC alone. You know what I mean? You already got the fan base. It's going to follow you. We want to see it. But stop throwing hands. Cause, like, Man, you I, will, should... I will never pay for OF ever in my life. You're um, are you sure I about that? I don't pay for OF either. <laughs> what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what you said, we want to see it. You said, like, you I'm mean, the fan, the fan base. It. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm just trying to find her a better income route because it's not the UFC at this point. Um, she's, she's terrible. She's not a great fighter. She's a pretty face. You know what I mean? She sells the fight with her face. But then she also gets smashed in the fight. It'd be better to see her smash not in the fight. She's going to win this fight, though. That's what you say. Uh, that's what's going to happen. Well, that's great. I mean, it's quite the opinion. All right. Well, may the best pick win. I mean, Anyway, moving on to the men's welterweight division, we got Tony Ferguson going up against Michael Chiesa. We got Ferguson coming in 15 and 8 in the UFC, 25 and 10 overall. And my man's is riding a seven fucking fight losing streak right now. We got fucking Chiesa coming in 11 and 7 in the UFC. 16 and 7 overall and 2 and 3 in their last 5 fights. Um I got I I have to go with Chiesa only because fucking it's it's been looking rough for uh Ferguson. I'm not going to lie though, in a majority of these losses, he looks great early on and then just something bad happens and it just all goes out the window. There's been a couple of fights I'd say like the Oliveira fight and the the Benil Darius fight where like he he just got outmatched. That's just what that was. He just uh he was fighting the better fighter that night. But there's what been a couple the, of times where like, he had? like with Michael Chandler, he was actually no, winning his that last fight. fight though. And then he got fucking booted in his grill. What? His last fight. His last fight was with uh Patty Pimbley. That's right. And I that guess that one too. He he looked all right, but then this is the problem. It just he started He's to too fade. Fucking old. 
he's got the cardio. Don't get me wrong. He's got the cardio. He's got the fight IQ. He's got literally his whole package. The problem is, is as you get older, your reflexes slow the fuck down. That's the reason. I think that's the biggest reason that fighters, you know what I mean, at some point have to retire. It's not that they don't know enough. It's not that they're not strong enough. It's that you don't see this fucking punch coming as fast as the other person sees their punch come or their punch that's coming at them or whatever. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's purely based on reaction time. That's why F one drivers are generally in their twenties, and then once they get to about what twenty seven, twenty eight. Like, it's a wrap for you. Like, stop driving, my nigga, because you cannot turn that wheel as fast as you need to to hit that corner. It's it's all timing. That's all it is. Tony Ferguson is a far, or not, my bad. Did I say that wrong? What? Yeah, Tony Ferguson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is a far better UFC fighter than Michael Chiesa at like you know what I mean as far as knowledge goes. But if you're not able to react fast enough, you're gonna get clipped. And it just is what it is. Well, okay. Let's let's break this down real quick. We got uh Chiesa, they're gonna be the younger fighter by four years. Um they're gonna be the taller fighter. They're probably gonna be the better of the two in the grappling department, but not as dangerous in the striking. Um I'm not I'm not hyped about this pick. Um, I think that they are throwing Ferguson a chance. I think that out of anybody that he could feed, he could fight on this uh, current slate and defeat, it, it could be Chiesa. Um, but yeah, like I said, he he just he looks good, and then eventually either just he starts to fade or something flash happens, and it just looks bad for my dude. If I'm if I'm wrong on any fight, I'll, this one I'll be I'll happy to take the L on this one. But I'm never yeah. happy to take an L ever. I'm gonna go so with fuck that shit. I'm gonna go with Chiesa in this one. I'm going with Chiesa as well. Tony Ferguson. I'm sorry, my guy. You're a Hall of Famer, but you're about to fucking eat dirt. <laughs> Moving on to the to the bantamweight division, we got Marlon Vera going up against Davidson Figueroa. Um, we got Vera coming in. 15 and 8 in the UFC, 23, 9 and 1 draw overall. And they're 3 and 2 in their last five fights. We got Figueredo coming in, 12, 3 and 1 draw uh, in the UFC, 23, 3 and 1 draw overall. And they're going to be 3 and 2 in their last five fights. Uh, I'm going to be going with Vera in this one by decision or KO. Um, they're going to be the younger fighter, the taller fighter. Longer fighter, they're gonna have the edge in the striking. They can grapple, even though you you don't necessarily see them have to uh, flex that much these days. They're usually typically just standing. Um, I mean, I don't know. I think if anything, if he does have to use it, it'll just be him having to defend the takedown to keep it on the feet. They're definitely the most durable fighter throughout their entire career. They've never been stopped. And uh, they're more experienced in this weight division. Um, Figueredo's moving up right now. They're going to be the smaller fighter. They were the former flyweight 125-pound champion. But really, a majority of their fights have been with uh, Brandon Moreno, just one opponent. So, I mean, they've... Won a couple of times here in the bantamweight division against, you know, some decent competition. Um, but he's been finished by smaller guys, so I could see Vera potentially knocking him out or at least just dominate and piecing him up on the feet. Um, Vera did recently just lose their fight for the bantamweight title against Sean O'Malley. They didn't really they didn't look good at all in that fight, but I'm still going to go with them in this one. I got to go with Vera as well. Um, like you said, uh, I mean, neither one of them looked good in these last couple fights. But let's put it this way. Vera was in a championship fight. Figueredo wasn't. 
So I gotta go with Vera in this one. That's my pick. <laughs> Moving on to the fucking uh to the middleweight division, the co-main event of the evening. We got Shara Bullet Magomedov going up against Michal uh Oleg Zaychuk. Um we got Magomedov coming in 2 and 0 in the UFC, 13 and 0 overall. We got Oleg Zaychuk coming in 7 and 6 with one no contest in the UFC. 19 and 8 with that one no contest overall and 2 and 3 in their last 5 fights. I'm going to be going with Magomedov. I feel like this is just like I'm going to be going with them by uh decision or KO. I feel like this is a showcase fight for them. Uh, they're gonna have the edge in the grap. I mean, in the striking, they definitely can grapple. I mean, not necessarily like taking people down or anything, but they just know how to work off of their back. And I assume if they're uh in the top position, they definitely know how to rain down strikes from there as well. Um, super dangerous just overall. Oleg Zaychuk, they're definitely a striker. Um, they don't really like to even go to the ground at all. They got decent cardio. Um, but really all they present is like a flash KO threat. Like there's nothing fancy about their striking. Um, they've definitely put some folks down, you know, they've definitely put some names, you know, to sleep, but overall I just feel like this is just a fight for Magomedov to shine in front of, you know, the folks out there in Abu Dhabi. So I'll be going with Magomedov. My man's name ends in a D-O-V, right? <laughs> like, from Russia or Dagestan or wherever one of those fucking fighting bears-ass countries he's from, like, he's going to win. Never, like, you can't bet against these cats. Like, because that's, that, that's what they're doing all day. When you got, like, the half Amish beard thing going on and you're from <laughs> Russia, my dog, like, you're not losing. Like... That's a choice to like do the half Amish beard. Like, like you are committed. You're committed to like just killing people in the cage. So I'm going uh Marga Madoff. Um that's where I'm at. All right. Moving on to the co oh shit, I almost said the co main event. Mm-hmm. My bad. I know. Moving on to the main event of the evening. At some point, you will replace that with a, a, a fact or, or whatever. I'm not even we got tripping. <laughs> that, I'm never going to put anything in for that. I'm just going to let you know that right now. You should, though. No. Well, I Definitely mean, I get it. Until you like, come up with something better or until we upgrade the situation we got here, that's what we. That's all we got. Okay. All right. So moving on, we got a, a, the main event. It's a bantamweight bout between Corey Sanhagen going up against Umar Mo. <laughs> Bruh. Corey Sanhagen going up against Umar Nurmagomedov, uh, the cousin of the great Khabib Nurmagomedov. Mm -hmm. uh, we got Corey Sanhagen coming in. They're ten and three in the UFC, seventeen and four overall, and three and two in their last five fights. We got Nurmagomedov coming in five and zero in the UFC and seventeen and zero overall. You just said that you can't pick against these dudes. Well, guess what? I'm going with Sanhagen by KO or decision in this fight. <laughs> They're going to be the older fighter by four <coughs> years, the taller fighter. They're definitely going to have the edge in striking, and they can grapple, which I'm not going to put much stock into because if it does go to the ground, more than likely this shit's going to be, you know, in the favor of uh, Nurmagomedov. But, um... I just feel like they got the momentum behind them. It's their time. I don't think that Nurmagomedov has faced nearly the level of competition that San Hagen has. Uh, they're just, they got a name, and the UFC's trying to fast track them. That, that's really all that's happening. And nobody's accepting a, a fight against this guy because they, they have nothing to gain except for saying that they beat, you know, a Nurmagomedov. So Sanhagen had to step up to the plate because they're really in like a weird spot because they can't get over the hump because they've lost 
fights that should have put them in position for the belt. But at the same time, you know, it's like there's nobody else for them to face. They faced everybody. So the only way they can really put themselves in position is to beat this, you know, uh, prospect that, I mean, I don't want to call him a prospect, but he's, he hasn't done a lot in the UFC either. He's done some shit, but he hasn't done a lot. And in comparison to Sanhagen, who's had, you know, fucking like eight more fights than him um, in the UFC alone. I mean, I don't know. I just, I think that Sanhagen's going to finally get over the hump on this one. I'm going to be going with him. Uh, I think that he's going to, you know, do something unorthodox, catch him with a flying knee or something nasty that he wasn't looking for trying to shoot a takedown. And, uh, yeah, Sanhagen's going to get it done. USA, nigga. (laughs) (laughs) My nigga better tuck that shit in for the Olympics. (laughs) <laughs> fucking this shit is not going to go down that way. Corey Sanhagen is about to be in the fucking sand hating his fucking life when fucking the Mark the Maga Madoff fucking beat the shit. We're talking about Khabib's brother. He fights Khabib daily, who's the greatest, arguably the greatest UFC fighter that's ever fucking fought, never lost. Oh but then Corey Sanhagen is going to like randomly beat Khabib's brother who's never lost? Cousin. Cousin. Brother. I don't give a fuck. Like, all these, like, I mean, they all got the last, same last name. Like, it's kind of weird. You know what I mean? It might be awesome. I don't know. What I'm saying, though, is there's no cut that fucking out. way <laughs> that Corey said, hey, is winning. Like, what are we talking about? Like, this is the dumbest main card I've ever seen. Just on, like, a, like on a betting standpoint, like, all the money's going on that shit. <clears throat> but why would you have your money going the wrong way? It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, well, we'll see, bro. When that fool shoots in and Sanhagen gives him one of them bony ass knees to the grill, you're going to be singing a different tune. That's all I'm saying. You know how it is when these fools who primarily grapple after a while, if they're not able to get the grappling going, they just look like a fool. He's 17 and 0, my guy. Perfect. And who's beat him? Nobody, but who is he beat as well? Doesn't fucking matter. No one his, has his a last blueprint fight. To the beat last him. person to fight him was a dude who had to step up from outside of the country and he had problems with him. He wasn't able to just put him away. And this was just a unknown from outside the country making their debut. Okay. So that's a part of We're that 17 about and 0. This guy, Madoff. his wins and his losses are comprised of either UFC fucking top contenders, fucking legends, or uh, champions. Cool. You want to make a bet on this fight? Me and you? Just me and you? Uh, I already owe you. I owe you money and push-ups. I'm good. You know, double or nothing. All right. Run it. But, so you owe me how many push-ups? 50? I owe you 100 push-ups. You owe me 100, 40 right? Bucks. And 40. Mm-hmm. And but you're going to You're gonna do them on the show, though, it. right? Yeah, either that or like a short. Or just short, like where you're just sitting there. Yeah. Getting them. I don't know if I can pump out a hundred push ups in sixty seconds, but Well you better start fucking training. Try to make it happen. You know what I mean? Make something happen. All right. Well, folks, that concludes our uh picks and predictions portion of this show. Real quickly on the parlays, I just got a quick little base three with a spicy four. Uh I'm gonna be going with Chiesa, Vera. And Magomedov for my base three. And then if you want to spice it up, I'm going to throw Sam Hagen on top of that. What's your parlay? That's your parlay? What's yours? My parlay is going to be Dumas. Very beginning. You know what I mean? So you can see that you're going to start winning literally as soon as we start the goddamn fight. That's crazy. You're fucking crazy. Go ahead, though. Dudikova will be the second one. 
Go ahead. I'm fucking tired of you. Like, you're, you're fucking <laughs> doubting of me, you know what I mean? We're fucking, like, what, seven weeks into this shit? Like, almost eight, or, I mean, seven months into this shit. Almost eight months into this. I'm killing shit. I'm fucking part of God. You're leading me by so many, but I gotta look at the graphic, but you're only leading me by, like, fucking look at the graphic. seven or eight fights. It's gonna be fucking bad, bro. Anyway, Dumas. Dudakova. Oh, uh, I'm feeling pretty solid about Godinez. Oh my god! So that's three, and then I'll throw uh, the Maga Madoff. You know what I mean? Since you want the like last fight to be your fucking your spicy, that's not even fucking spicy. That's a like lock shit. Like four, boom, knock it down. Okay. All right. Well. Uh. Want to put a bet on the fucking parlays too? No, I'm good. Uh, I wouldn't do that either. I'm all right. If I were you, I'm all right. You know, uh, big shout outs to, uh, we got some folks in the building. Big shout outs to motherfucking Young Wins in the building, aka uh, fucking uh, in the comments, aka guest extraordinaire. Well, aka fucking, did like good on that fucking episode. Like, I think he, he hit better than, I think, mean, both of us at that point. Or, oh, uh, no, no, no. No? No. No? <laughs> No. Uh, he went against us on some picks know, on top did. of the picks that we fucked up on. So it was actually kind of a bad night for him. <laughs> <laughs> it was a bad night for us, though, too. So, Oh, uh, okay. Well, I mean, I it wasn't I was like bad, bad, but it, it was just meh. Was super mid. No, mid. okay. I thought he had done like better than me. He probably may have done better than you. Yeah, like I was saying, okay. Yeah, you are, <laughs> yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. No, I'm pretty sure he did do better than me, though. Special shouts out to our uh, other guests in the building. We got my guy fucking Josh P in the building. Jay Patty. Well, fucking, uh, we're going to have to get him a, a moniker here soon. He's going to have to come on to the show. <laughs> fucking uh, salute to y'all. Appreciate y'all. Um, but yeah, outside of that, want to thank everybody who's been watching. Make sure that you like, comment, share, and subscribe to, to the channel. Wait, hey, hey. Fuck We're still trying to get hey, those hey, numbers no. up to get those live streams going. Fuck those numbers. What you got coming up here next, like the this weekend or some shit? Oh, uh, next Friday, for any of those, uh, for any of you who are watching in the Denver area, uh, next Friday I'm going to be performing live at the Oriental Theater. We're going to be opening up for uh, Afro Man that night. You know, so it's going to be a super smoked out, fucking turned up event, you know. Uh, so, yeah, come check me out, you know, doing what I do outside of this uh, MMA podcast and shit. And, um, yeah. You guys sure. can come out. You know what I mean? I'll be there. You guys can shake my hands for the wins that I've been giving y'all. <laughs> I'll be right there. <laughs> or you, can... you know what I mean? I might have like a whole little booth for just myself. Or if you're a fighter, you can come out and sock this nigga in the face for fucking disrespecting you. I mean, <laughs> there's also that. I'm uh, quick, though. Uh, other than that, though, <laughs> make sure that you follow us on IG at uh, Bros Talk MMA. You can follow my bro here at r1.mason, and you can follow me at Utica underscore SME. And you can also follow us on the newly, uh, fuck, I don't even know what bros to say, but talk, yeah, talk the bros shit. talk, TikTok, you know, you can come check us out on there. We just primarily post, uh, funny clips. Uh, we did post, um, you know, the, the, the article from, uh, Voyage Denver that they posted on us. But outside of that, it's mostly just funny clips, but yeah. Um, much love to everybody that's been watching. Um, happy betting this week. Best of luck. Remember that these motherfuckers are super early. They're going to be at 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get this posted before 10 a.m., but oh, if you're will. watching this, you know, just make sure that, uh, you don't go with anything that my brother said on this episode. I don't fuck with you. You little stupid ass bitch. Listen to him. You know what I mean? You don't, you know what I mean? You don't believe me? I don't give a fuck if you believe me. Fucking solid.
I feel like I'm gonna call perfect card this. Perfect. Time. You gonna call perfect card? I feel like I got the perfect card, unless uh, except for if even Tony, if you call perfect except card, if Tony Ferguson wins, and I'm cool. I'll go with uh, even if you call perfect card. We only got what three different, something like that. It's still a winning card for me. I'm still like ten and three on this shit. Mm-hmm. I'm still gonna have a high percentage. So I hope you do call a perfect card. I hope I do. It'll be good for you. I need to get. It'll a be few. good for your, your your ego and shit. I need know? to get a few of these back. Yeah, get get a you should get a whole lot more back, bro. Like. Start like feeding me bad information or something, you know what I mean? Because goddamn, I'm fucking good at this shit. All right, well, folks, <laughs> appreciate you. Uh, thanks again for watching. Till next time, we out.